Chapter 5. A New Bicycle. Sunday the 6th of March 2016. We didn't realise it in the darkness on our way back, but my bicycle is missing. Curtis says he wasn't even aware I had a bicycle chained upon the railings of the library opposite, but he's seen me on it many times before. I'm awaiting the police's visit, but I have been informed it's unlikely to turn up. I will visit the library and ask to see any CCTV evidence. Pussy Willow is meowsy, as though someone has been overindulging her. I can't trust Curtis with anything. Monday the 7th of March 2016. I had to get the bus to work and almost missed it. I can't get the tube anymore as I know I may as well have stayed at home and smoked a pack of cigarettes. It was terrible, full of stinking bodies and a particularly sweaty man who not so much sat next to me as on me. He looked quite perturbed when I asked him to move out of the way and instead of getting off I simply stood next to him rather than sat but he should really take a look at himself. There were two school children who were talking about an inspirational speech they'd heard at the Shepherd's Bush Mosque. Wonderful that they were talking about the importance of community, but if only they'd heard whatever it is that inspired them in a museum or a place of science. Knowledge and facts are my only god. Didn't have time to get to the library this evening, and the helpline was closed too. I bet it was someone local, who's obviously seen the bike parked there before. Probably some kids from around Shepherd's Bush Corner, as they're known to come into Holland Park occasionally and cause trouble. I bet they don't even know how to use the custom gears on it. Getting back home was a nightmare, as there was a person under the train, as they say in the underground, and the buses were full of tube commuters. People should really stick to their usual transport when these things happen, as it just makes problems for everyone else, but I can understand it. More inconsiderate, really, is the suicidal individual who felt the need for attention so strongly they disrupted the journeys of a million people. I pity them, but really, is there any need? Wednesday the 9th of March, 2016. I went to the library to ask about any CCTV coverage they might have had over the railings where my bike was stolen from, and they informed me that they had in fact emptied the railings themselves, without any notice. Of course, they insisted that they'd had posters up for weeks explaining that the library rails were off limits to the public, but firstly, I'm sure they didn't. And secondly, I'm not the public. I live opposite for Pete's sake. The lady, who clearly wasn't very well educated, told me that anything found attached to the railings had been destroyed. On speaking to the manager, I was given exactly the same treatment, almost as though the staff had rehearsed their answers. Very suspicious, if you ask me, as if it were a conspiracy to cover up for a mistake. I'll find some suitable legal counsel tomorrow and begin proceedings. Thursday, 10th of March, 2016. Another nightmare commute meant I was unable to start a legal battle against the council over my bike. Curtis expressed the opinion that following up on the complaint was a waste of my time, which it may well be, but it's the principle of the thing. Magnus said a rude word at dinner, and I was very sharp with him. I don't know who he got it from, but a phone call to the school is clearly needed. Miri will make one tomorrow. Where does an eight-year-old pick up the word bumberclot from anyway? And what on earth does it mean? Friday, the 11th of March, 2016. I spoke to a solicitor's secretary today. It was very hard to get past, as she was adamant that her phone don't usually deal with cases like mine. However, I insisted she pass the information on, and that I would be calling back. Fifteen minutes later, I was called by a very rude man, apparently a solicitor, who said they wouldn't be taking on my case as it was frivolous. The attitude of these corporate types still astounds me. Saturday, 12th of March, 2016. I got a phone call this morning from the library, explaining that now they knew who the bike belonged to and had been given my details, by myself, I might add. They'd be sending me a bill for £50 to pay for its removal. I'll leave you with this little note, dear diary. For evil to triumph, all it takes is good men to do nothing. J.F. Kennedy. I'll look up the exact quote tomorrow. Also, I bought a new bicycle today. The hard-to-get type. The Diary of a Hipster was inspired by George and Whedon Grossmith serial and later book, The Diary of a Nobody. It was read by Damien Benedict and produced by George Rockall Schmidt.